Isn't it wonderful to be home? This is our spiritual home. And all of those things you saw in the video this morning, I hope you find them here and more. Because you are loved, cherished, and desired to be here. All of everything before God is forgotten. So let's stand together and let's sing greater. My name is Cindy Rednauer, and I'm filling in for Pastor Jerry today, who is uh, coming back from Indiana. As you will uh, probably know, his sister passed away, and he was doing her service yesterday, as I did my own sister's service yesterday. So um, it's been a weekend, <laughs> and I am so grateful that each of you are here today to worship and to glorify our God, our King, our Jesus. So. If you are new, we are so glad you are here. Welcome, welcome. We have a coffee mug for you. It says, coffee gets me started and Jesus keeps me going. And um, I think that that is such a cool little saying. Um, but Jesus always gets us started. Coffee gets us started. And Jesus is the only thing that keeps us all going. There should be a pen and other kinds of goodies in there. Also, you will find uh, with your bulletin a connect card. 
and we really would love for you to fill it out. Even if you don't have a prayer request, but if you do, put that on the back. But just put your name on the front and let us know that you were here. Um, Pastor Jerry and I both pray for you all um, through, I pray for what's on the bulletin. He prays for all of them, even the ones that are uh, considered confidential. So we are just so grateful to be here. Are we not? Wait a minute. Are we not? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's worship in song, shall we, with I Speak Jesus.
Dara sends you the call to worship. <laughs> it's all good. Good morning. Um, today's call to worship is Psalms 63, 63, verses 1 through 8. So if you please follow along on the screen while we read it responsively. Oh, God, you are my God. I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. Beholding your power and glory. Because of your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is filled with your goodness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think of you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. My, my soul, soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Amen. Thank, thank you, Dar, very much. Um, so we're going to have Haley do our prayer this morning. You guys can bow your heads with me. Lord, your love has held me and kept me through the suffering. Now may your hope and healing lead me quickly to the place of hope. If you guys could join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, as we make our transition between our praise team, thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Let's give them a hand, shall we? They guys, they really, both, both the praise team and the choir work so hard to bring this music to you guys so that we can give it to Jesus. So, we are so grateful for all of them. Um, and uh, today's kind of a special day. We're going to um, be listening to one of our young people share her testimony this morning. And I think it's always good to know that our young people are willing to know who Jesus is, as long as we're willing to tell them who he is. And so Jeanette is all set.
so gorgeous. So this morning, as uh, uh, we begin our phase of worship, I want to share that uh, Hayden McGuire, who I have known since she was, you know, knee high to a grasshopper. Um, she started in youth group and uh, came all the way through. She's now an adult. Um, and one of the things that Hayden has done is really strive to find who Jesus is in her life. And as I've watched her grow and as I've watched her uh, find herself through struggles, um, it has been an, a privilege to walk beside her with this growth. Uh, Hayden has attended camp many times, and this summer she actually got to be a camp counselor, which was very wonderful. She's actually the f one of the first who uh, came to our youth group or actually became a counselor at camp, so we were very proud of her. And so Hayden's going to come up and share with you uh, a little bit about her walk. Would you welcome Hayden, please? <laughs> As I walked into the youth group meeting, I was greeted by a vibrant community of young individuals who were genuinely happy and full of love. Their energy was contagious, and it went towards me. The atmosphere felt different from anything I've ever experienced before. They were all talking about this person named Jesus, and the way they spoke about him made me curious to know more. I had distanced myself from my family. God seemed unwilling or unable to make anything better. I was angry at God. I stopped attending church, and I be began to en engage in self-destructive behaviors, hurting myself, those closest to me. I was finding my world to be increasingly dark and in a hopeless place. But once I accepted Christ into my life, I had been, been given freedom, freedom from the exhausting search for approval. I have come to understand that his approval is all I need. His acceptance is something that I will always have and something that I have always had. He chose me when he created my sin on his cross, his righteousness for my sin. It is because, that, because of this that I have been given new life, a new life in which I will forever proclaim God's glory. Knowing Jesus has not made my life easy. I <laughs> I make mistakes every day and struggle with false idols and temptations. Some days are filled with hard. However, no matter what is going on in my life, there is now constant joy. I suffer from a lot of mental health issues, and I don't have a father here to be with me anymore. So getting lost in the darkness is really easy for someone like me, but I did not let the darkness win. I let the love of God win. I am far from perfect, but I will always know that I am perfect in my God's eyes. My bond with God has evolved so much, and I love my God so much. This past summer wasn't starting off so well. I was scheduled to be a camp counselor this summer, but I was unfortunately in a very bad car crash with my friends and was unable to do the high rope training at the camp that they had. So for the first two weeks, I missed it completely because of my car crash. But I didn't let that upset me or get in the way of having an amazing time as my first year as a camp counselor. God helped me every step of the way when I felt alone and missing my loved ones. By sharing Jesus and his love with others, I was able to deal with those feelings. He will always be here to help me in accepting that took long, 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 long time. <laughs> Believe me, as a kid, you don't think much about it. But once your brain develops, you think more about it, and you're like, you just overthink about it every day. And you're like, wow, that really did happen. And you just don't think about it as a kid. You're just like, oh, yeah, Moses in the ark. You kind of, like, just grow up thinking all about it. But once you get older, you develop the, the real, like, truth and all, like, everything else you're able to comprehend more. And that's, like, the fun nature about it. And I am grateful for all that God is doing for me in my life. Thank you for allowing me this time to talk about you with my relationship with God. Thank you, Hayden. It takes a lot of bravery to stand up here and share with you not just the ups, but the downs that are in her, in her life and that 
she continues to struggle with. We all struggle with things. There isn't one person walking this planet who doesn't struggle. There isn't one. And yet if we walk with Jesus, if we do that, then we can walk with him through that struggle and not have to carry it ourselves. In Proverbs 22.6, uh, the New King James Version says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Who's heard that? I love that, but I like the NIV that says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Start children off. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Because that's our job. The minute we have children, the minute that children come into our lives, whether they're ours biologically, in Sunday school, in church, friends, our job is to start them off in the way they should go. Raising up our children and helping them to grow so that they will connect with Jesus in their adult life, what a privilege, what an honor, and a responsibility we have to teach them. We all know that adult life is hard, right? It's a challenge every day. And we often say, I know I do, I know my mom does, we say this very often, I don't know how anyone does life without having Jesus. Do you say that? As adults, we face uncertainty, death, money troubles, job insecurity, job loss, depression. The list goes on and on. And guess what? It's the same list for our children, too. They struggle with uncertainty. They struggle with the death of a loved one. They struggle when their family has money troubles or mom and dad are fighting or their own depression. And so we need to point them to Jesus. The only way, with a capital W, the only way to handle life. They need to learn how to grab onto him when they are young so that it becomes a way of life something that they do as adults. Maybe as a young person, you didn't hear the message of salvation as you grew up. Maybe you didn't get there until adulthood. But imagine if you had heard it. Perhaps those mistakes you made as a young adult could have been avoided, or perhaps you would have been able to talk to someone about it. Just like Hayden was always able to talk to someone. There was always someone who cared and loved her, and who cares and loves about every single child and young adult in this church. Or like me, maybe you did hear the message, but chose to walk a different path for a while. Not my best time, folks. But knowing who Jesus is made it so much easier for me when my eyes were open to his everlasting love. When I was watching that video today and I saw the people knocking on the door, I remember being a young teenager, probably early 20s, and standing outside a church that I used to attend and wanting so badly to knock on that door. But I was afraid to knock on that door. I was afraid about what they would say about what I had made on the choices before. But you know what? That's not what they did. They opened their arms and loved me back to Jesus. And that's what we're called to do. Proverbs 19.20 says, Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. And we all have a future. We all do. Whether we're 10, 20, or 67, or 82. We all have a future. Whether it's a minute, or 10 years, or 100 years. We don't know, but it is the future that God holds in his hand. And our duty is to our children and young people, and I am grateful for young people like Hayden and Renee and Michelle who know how important it is to speak Jesus into the world of children and youth. But you know what? Us older folks are needed too. 
our testimony and witness, our support and our love is just as important. You can't build a building without a foundation. We are the foundation upon which the next generation of amazing Christian people will stand, right? Job 12, 12 says, Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. As we live, we learn. That's what we hope to do, right? That's what we hope to give to the people coming up behind us. But our firm foundation, the foundation on pit, on upon which we all stand, is Jesus Christ and his word. That is where we must start each day anew. Matthew 7, 24. Whoops, wrong way. Wrong one. There we go. Therefore, whoever hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. So many of us, when we hear these words, think, well, I have Jesus in my life, and I read the Bible, so I have built my house on the rock, right? But let's look at this just a bit closer. The first part of the sentence says, therefore, whoever hears these words of mine. So we might think, well, I've heard what Pastor Jerry has said. I've listened to his sermons. Or I've listened to your teaching, Cindy, or some other Bible teacher, and so I've built my house on the rock. That's Jesus. But I want you to notice the rest of the passage. The rest of the passage says, and Jesus says, and puts them into practice. Puts them into practice. We can't simply be hearers of the word. We have to be doers. And when we are doers, we're then building our house on the rock, the foundation that says, I hear you, Lord, and I'm going to do what you say. We need to go out and do what Jesus says. And where do we find what he has said? Right there in the Bible. Right there. It's right there. And if your Bible is gathering dust on the nightstand or on the bookshelf, I encourage you to dust it off, open it up. Because it's through his word that we will build our house on the rock and weather the storms of life that will come our way. And helping our kids build their houses on the rock of the word of God will be the way we continue to build the kingdom here in our lives right now. Showing our kids that we value the word of God, that we read his word, Old and New Testament, that it is valuable and necessary to get through all the storms of life. Because storms will come, my friends. We're weathering one now. Lisa's family is weathering one. Storms will come. That is certain. But having our houses built on the rock gives us the strength to withstand them. And if you've given that gift to your children, how much better it will be for them as they navigate their lives through school, relationships, as they get older, jobs, Choosing their recreation, even, right? What will they do for fun? All of it comes through loving Jesus, building a firm foundation, building on the rock of the word of God. You know, it is my fervent prayer that each of us sitting here today connects with at least one young person in our life and then talks to them about Jesus talks with them, listens to them, hears their cares and concerns and their questions and their doubts. And whether that child be your child, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, or church youth here, you can simply share your story and invite them and their families to share their stories and also invite them here to church. Be a positive influence and be a listening ear. These are some of our youth and their family. These young people were just uh, confirmed recently. They still come. They still need us. And they need Jesus even more. As they walk into their young teenage lives, and we all remember that, right? Because it was easy. 
if you have someone that you know you can turn to, that you know you can say, hey, I, I got this struggle. I just wanted to talk to you about it. Because so often, and I think that's true with all of us, we don't know where to look in the Bible for what we're looking for. Sometimes we're like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to look for. Well, there is a thing called a concordance, folks, and there is something in the back of your Bible, too, that you can kind of look up stuff. How am I feeling? Where do I find this? And um, Mary just put a poster in the Sunday school room with all kinds of Bible verses for all the different things for the kids. That is amazing, and it's wonderful. Get connected with the young people of this church. We know how hard this world is. And so let's make it, help make it a bit easier by making sure that our young people know that they too can turn to Jesus. He is there for them. He is standing there with his arms open, his hands open, saying, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest for your souls. That doesn't just count for old people. That counts for young people too. This isn't just an old people church, my friends. It is the church of Jesus Christ, and that is who we are. Amen? Amen. So will you join us uh, in our closing? I know we're getting out a little early. <laughs> After this weekend, I thought we could all use a little break, right? Although love in Jesus is wonderful. But we're going to end our service today with the song, um, I am not, am I right? Yeah, I am not ashamed. <laughs> stand please and let's worship loud we are not ashamed of the name of Jesus So today, I just go ahead and have a seat. I just want to remind you that Hayden is here, and there are many, many other young people in this church back in the Sunday school who need to know her witness and need to know yours. So please remember to share your stories. Um, in next steps, I want to remind you what's happening next week. Do you remember? There we go. <laughs> we go back to two services. What time? And 11. 9 and 11. And adult Sunday school starts again at? There we go. <laughs> or right following the uh, 9 o'clock service. I also uh, want to, um, what do I have here? Uh, note all. Oh, note all the meetings on the back. There's a lot of stuff happening. We're starting to gear up. It's becoming fall. There's lots of stuff coming back. And if you haven't looked back in the fellowship hall, I encourage you to just take a walk back there. It's all cleaned out. Things are getting ready to get started to get building. And so because of that, the coffee hour, the women's um, fellowship, all of that is going to be over in the church office. And all their stuff is over there. Kent was kind enough to um, put the shelf over there so they don't have to walk back and forth. And there's that book. Yeah. <laughs> also next week, um, here, hold this up, would you? There we go. Connect cards, just like this. You're going to find them in your pews starting next week. 
okay? Um, we're gonna try, yep, yep, exactly. We're gonna try uh, and see if that works so that everybody will fill them out. So when you sit down, look in front of you, pull one out, fill it out, and where do we put it? In the box, that's right. So that we know and we can all pray. Isn't she wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, so we're gonna bless you, okay? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.